Good evening, folks. This is Bill Breeden. Thank you for joining me tonight for Constellation Tour number 66. Tonight we're going to go over a somewhat obscure and small constellation called Sextans, the Sextant, which is located along the celestial equator. So it's pretty much visible from all over, um, both northern and southern locations. Uh, sextant is visible from March to May each year. So we have Stellarium set up here for April the 11th of 2021 with a 60 degree field of view simulating what the night sky looks like to the naked eye. We also have it set up for somewhat suburban, moderately light polluted skies. Okay, so how do we go about finding this obscure little constellation of sextons? The best, the best you can do is to look for the prominent constellation Leo, the lion, which serves as a prominent um, signpost of the spring sky. So we're looking south right now. And let's let's try to get our bearings here. This really bright star here is Sirius. And we're going to look a little bit to our southeast and look really high up in the sky. And we're going to look for the backward question mark of Leo the lion. And I believe this is it right here. Now, it's these signpost constellations that really help us find the fainter and more obscure ones, and Leo is certainly there to help us navigate the spring sky. So to find sextons, you want to look for the dot in the question mark. That would be Regulus or Alpha Leonis. And you want to look for the star at the top of the question mark here, um, Algenubi or Epsilon Leonis. And just draw a line between these two and then go down about the same distance. So stopping about there in the sky. This region right here is where you will find sextons, the sextant. And I'm showing here an outline that gives you the idea of where sextons is in the sky. And it's depicted here as just a line connecting two stars. So let's have a look at the mythical figures. And you will see here, here's Leo the lion. And here's the bright star Regulus. And here's Epsilon Leonis. And we draw our line between the two and go back, go down about the same distance. Sextans is depicted as a navigator's sextant, which is an instrument that is used to find positions on Earth by using celestial objects. Now, there were, there were two other instruments that, that functioned sort of the same way as a sextant, and that was the quadrant and the octant. Now, the names come from how many sections they divide a circle into. A quadrant divided a circle into four sections, a sextant six sections, and an octant eight sections. So over time it was the sextant or the uh, device that divided the, the uh, circle into six sections that came to be um, in popular use. So that's been that's been uh, forever immortalized in the night sky as sextons, the sextant. Um, there is also a constellation that depicts the octant, and it's known as octants, and we'll cover that in a future constellation tour. Okay, um, there aren't a, there's not a whole lot going on in sextons. So let's, let's make this a little bit more interesting. Let's head out to a dark site. 
It's always my favorite part anyway. And now let's see if we can find sextons again. Uh, we're looking uh, toward the southeast in mid-spring from mid-northern latitudes. And we're going to look up here for the backward question mark of Leo, which is right here. And we're going to draw a line between this star here, which is Epsilon Leonis, and Regulus. And we're going to keep going about the same distance, stopping about here. So this area of sky should be sextons. Okay, there are no really bright stars in sextons. Um, it's usually these two that are depicted on star charts. Uh, this one here is Alpha Sextantus, and this one here is Beta Sextantus. And neither of those are double stars. It looks like Alpha is 4.4 uh, magnitude and beta is fifth magnitude. So not real bright, probably can't see these from the city, but you certainly should be able to see them from, from a dark site or at least on the outskirts of the suburbs. I do have two double stars that we can look for tonight. They are 17 and 18 sextantus. So let's use our go-to telescope. And here, 17 sextantus is shown as a ninth magnitude double star with separation of 0.21 arc seconds. So let's have a look through the finder. And you can see this is really a nice double. Here you got the two components right here. It looks like a kind of a pale blue and a pale gold color. So the, the gold one is 18 sextantus, and the blue one is 17 sextantus. See, 17 is magnitude 5.9, and 18 is magnitude 5.6. So they're about equal in brightness, which always makes for a nice view through a finder scope or binoculars. And in the case of these, through a telescope. So through a 24 millimeter pan optic, which is what I'm simulating here, uh, this nice wide double star is really, really nice. And look like 18 sextantus is 526 light years away, and 17 sextantus is 526 light years away. 526.06 and 526.91. So it is very, very highly probable that these two stars are related to each other. Very nice. Okay, we'll return to a naked eye view here. And let's see if we can find the constellation sextons again. We're looking south, a little bit to the southeast. And we're going to go ahead and find the backward question mark of Leo. And draw a line between these two stars about the same distance. And here's where we'll find sextons. So I do have one deep sky object to, to find while we're here, and that is the Spindle Galaxy, or NGC 3115. So let's pull out our go-to telescope again. And the Spindle Galaxy is also known as Caldwell 53, and it is located 43 million light years away. It looks like Stellarium is going to have an image of it for us, which is always nice. It makes these uh, 
simulated star parties that much more realistic. So it looks like here's the galaxy right here. And it's 10th magnitude. So you definitely have to pull out the telescope and hopefully from a dark location. And through a 24 millimeter panoptic eyepiece, this makes a wonderful target. Let's bump up the power a little bit. And look at it through a 19 millimeter panoptic. Now I happen to use an eight inch Schmidt Cassegrain telescope, the focal ratio of F10. And through that, through that telescope, the 19 millimeter Teleview Panoptic eyepiece is spectacular. And it's just the, the ease of use, the comfort of it. The, the distance you have to put your eye from it is very forgiving. Um, there are no blackouts. Um, it's not difficult to position your eye correctly. You literally just step up to the telescope and look through it. And you see the whole field of view with no problem at all. I love the 19 millimeter panoptic eyepiece in an eight inch Schmidt Cassegrain F10 catadioptric telescope. The 24 millimeter um, in the same line, the panoptic line is wonderful, but that the 19 is just so perfectly comfortable, it's, it's hard to describe. It's hard to go back to anything else once I put the 19 millimeter in my my uh, star diagonal. Okay, well, there's not a whole lot going on in this little constellation of sextons. So this concludes my star tour for tonight. Good night and good seeing.